Hey, hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Marty Flah, and I'm very happy to be with you today in the 2021 edition of the Canadian Society of Civil Engineers Conference. I'm thrilled to talk about the topic of my research, which is entitled Automated Crack Identification Using Deep Learning Based Image Processing. This work is supervised by Professor Monsef Nadi at the University of Western Ontario. In today's presentation, I'm going to start by an introduction where I'm gonna give you an overview of the situation of our infrastructure today. Then we're gonna talk about the methodology to tackle damage into these civil engineering infrastructures. Third, we're gonna discuss our result. Fourth, we're gonna talk about the different limitations of our work. And finally, we're gonna conclude this work by setting different points that can open the door for further research. No one can deny that the situation of our infrastructure is getting worse and worse, whether bridges, buildings, dams, or any other civil engineering structures. All of them, they need proper intervention to guarantee their durability and service life. This damage can be caused by several triggers, including earthquakes, wind excitations, explosions, temperature variations like that we have in Canada here for the cycle of freeze and thaw, or even exceeding the years of service for any building or any other civil engineering asset. This is defined by an ensemble of cracks, scaling, spalling, or efflorescence, which can appear on the structural surface of our structures. Actually, the American Society of Civil Engineers reported that the situation of its bridges is marked as C+, for a scale from A to F, where A is the exceptional or the healthy situation of the building and F is the worst case scenario. The Federal Highway Administration reported that more than 185,000 bridges are in need for urgent consideration, where more than 46,000 of them are nearing the end of their service life. Traditionally, to assess damage, consulting companies were sending their highly experienced engineers or inspectors to go to the site and to try to localize the damage based on the naked eye, which can be dangerous, time consuming, and even some areas are hampered by demand demanding access. In the last two decades, there is a use of impact hammer uh, of non-destructive evaluation methods. However, all of these tools are local and we need the prayer info of the vicinity of damage so we can try to localize the area of damage exactly and predict what's going on there. Recently, thanks to the use of sensors, drones and accelerometers, this situation and this information of damage is getting better and better. So this advances help it to establish the what we call the data-based models. The data-based models are based on statistics and computer science. And here we are learning from observed data streams, unlike the physics-based models, when we need the deep expertise of the engineering concepts, and sometimes we need some structural and finite element analysis, which can be very complicated and can take too much time. So these advances in hardware and software engineering, we had these advances in data-driven approach to make them the most attractive techniques in the field of structural health monitoring. To process this big data, we need to start by an input, which is a data set of information or a data set of characteristics to this specific structure. Then we are gonna feed them into a deep learning model or a deep learning algorithm, which, which is going to be in a fully automated process to get finally the output, whether a classification, whether a regression, or it depends on the situation where we are working in. So in 2017, a group of researchers in MIT in the States tried to get a binary classification of damage on the civil engineering structures based on images. They were taking photos and classifying these photos into a cracked, uh, an image that has a crack and the other that doesn't. So this algorithm proved an accuracy of more than 90%. In 2018, Berkeley, 
California Berkeley University in the States, they tried to add something different. So what we call detecting the different structural components, not only detecting if there is damage or not, but also seeing if this, this element is a column, this element is a beam, this element is a wall, this element is a slab, and the different structural critical components into a building or a bridge or any other civil engineering structure. In 2019, different universities from China and Canada tried to uh, dig more into the structural engineering concepts, trying to have an idea about the structural damage acting upon these structural components. All of the proposed studies were lacking accuracy. Actually, the study that was proposed in 2018 proved an accuracy of 93%. And the, the different studies in 2019 were having different accuracy that didn't exceed 90%. 5%. So all of the proposed studies were lacking accuracy. They were taking too much time to train the algorithm and to test it. And finally, there is no study that tried to quantify the cracks in terms of length, width, and angle of orientation. For this reason, our study was proposed in 2020 at Western University to tackle these this research objectives. So we tried to develop a deep learning image-based technique with high accuracy and less computing time. We try to classify the crack types based on their orientation, which is gonna serve us to uh, automate the way to identify the kind of damage, whether if it's shear, flexural, combined, or even corrosion. Third, to combine the latest application of image-based uh, processing technique, which is the OTSU improved uh, uh, improved method with uh, the deep learning classification to uh, actually quantify the, uh, the uh, concrete cracks in terms of width, length, and angle of orientation, and finally, to assess the degree of severity of damage acting upon the structure based on the different international building codes. Our input consists of a publicly available data set from this study proposed in 20, uh, 2019. Um, we took four, four, 458 images of uh, this high resolution, and we cropped them into 227 times 227 uh, pixel resolution to get finally 20,000 images having cracks on them and 20,000 images having nothing. And all of the different images were taken from a, distance, a focal distance of 50 centimeter. To process this data, we need to provide different or variety of uh, situations. Then we're gonna proceed to cleaning our data and visualize it manually. So then we're gonna resize them all to the pixel resolution of 227, 227 pixel. So now we are labeling our data. From this 40,000 images, we only took 6,000 images. So at the end, we're gonna have five classes, whether if it's safe or it doesn't have any crack, vertical right, vertical left, horizontal right, horizontal left, and uh, then finally, we're gonna do a split of 60% for training, 20% for validating the algorithm, and 20% for testing it. So this is our classifier, and this is the way on how exactly to annotate the different images that we have. And uh, more information about the annotation and the labeling is provided into our paper. So after having this input or this data set, we need to go through the deep learning classifier or the deep learning algorithm. So our deep learning algorithm was consisting of a different architecture, which was new for our proposed study. The libraries used into our study are the TensorFlow and Keras, which were proven to be very efficient dealing with images. And uh, the coding algorithm was, uh, was uh, Python. We used Google Collaboratory to um, accelerate the uh, process of training. And uh, we were cloning all of our results into GitHub. So. Our proposed study actually has a user interface. So let's take this example, which is this inspector located here. This inspector here is having his computer and sending his drone to take different images at this large scale structure. The drone over here is trying to detect the different cracks over the proposed, over the proposed structure. The drone is gonna send images, is gonna send images to the uh, computer and then this computer, based on the algorithm that we provided, is going to try to, to, to test if there is any crack into the image or not. If there is any crack into the proposed uh, structural element, so we're going to process to the OTSU image processing, which we're going to talk about it in the rest of this presentation, which is going to quantify the crack, 
check the damage severity and finally to predict the model fate so this also image processing is the what we call the image segmentation or the image processing technique which is based on a non-linear filter into MATLAB which we use it to uh, remove any background noise into the image or any illumination or any unwanted deformation then we're gonna tr threshold this image based on the uh, uh, this histogram of uh, gray scale levels and all of these proposed techniques and these proposed functions are gonna be used to finally get a perfect image let's take this example so this is our original image and take an idea and have an idea about how perfect our final image is so after having this process we are gonna now apply the boundaries using uh, a MATLAB function this boundary is gonna try to compute the different lengths into uh, between the boundaries of, uh, of uh, the crack and finally it's gonna give us the uh, distance which which is for example in this case DAD which is the length of the crack we're gonna go to compute now the distance between the horizontal or vertical distance depending on the orientation of the crack we're gonna now compute the width and same thing to compute the angle of the crack and finally to get the information in pixel that's why you use the, the following formula to get uh, our um, distance or meter which is the information that we're gonna use for the rest of our study so to predict the mode of failure and this degree of severity you are gonna start by detecting the orientation of the crack into the image which is already provided by the deep learning classifier then we are gonna use the image processing technique based on the uh, Otsu image processing and then we're gonna quantify it angle of orientation is the one that we're gonna need and base it also on the algorithm input actually our algorithm is gonna ask the uh, the user to uh, propose whether um, if it's a horizontal element or a vertical element for example a beam or a column and the proximity of where exactly he's sending his drone or where exactly he's taking the photo for lecture so as you can see here in this table so we have a horizontal element for example and the crack orientation between all of these intervals uh, and the proximity exactly so uh, based on this table we're gonna uh, for example give an idea about the crack creation cause let's take this example of the crack a whenever we have a vertical element like uh, this column or B whenever we have uh, um, a horizontal element like this beam so A and B in these two cases are the corrosion or uh, the bond uh, damage so the current practice based on the Ontario structure inspection manual as an example it could compromise structural integrity based on the different international codes for example if we, if we look at the uh, at uh, the Canadian code the uh, the uh, the range of crack of the design phase is gonna be between 0.2 and 0.4 or 0.5 millimeters which is already um, which already exceeds this value here so this could compromise structural integrity for this reason our study was proposed to give an idea to the inspector whenever we exceed this 0.4 or 0.3 based on the structural uh, uh, design code that we are using so it can give an alert and an information to the uh, inspector or the civil engineer that we need to take proper intervention to guarantee the durability and the service life of our structures so now we are exposing our results and finally we got a 96.17 percent in uh, testing to test the new images based on the uh, training and validation of our algorithm as you can see uh, our algorithm actually uh, reached almost 98 percent in uh, in uh, training and validation and there is actually no overfitting here and same for the loss it was 0.14 which uh, actually proved that our algorithm is performing well uh, compared to the proposed uh, algorithms in the literature so now after uh, being confident about the uh, efficiency of our algorithm we went outside to take different images and to take some images from uh, from uh, the campus at western university and uh, this is an example of uh, images actually this is uh, this is drawn by hand and this is the actual result proved pro and provided by uh, the uh, the algorithm the, um, the quantification error for length was only 1.5 percent for width was five percent and for angle was two percent so our algorithm can perform well but always uh, there is uh, a room for uh, for improvement and there is a room to get uh, better results so here we talk about our limitations actually our algorithm had an amazing performance when dealing with single cracks per image however when having multiple uh, cracks um, these are our limitations for example whenever we have multiple non-intersecting cracks the algorithm is gonna uh, 
do all the the procedure based on the uh, on the thicker crack for uh, the case of multiple intersecting cracks uh, the algorithm is gonna consider all of this area for example here all of this area as damaged so um, these are the limitations of our study we we need to talk about the novelty and contributions of our proposed study so we demonstrated that a precise quantification of crack is essential to characterize the structural damage actually in concrete structures we provided a new configuration of the cnn deep learning architecture for vision-based structural health monitoring and we offered a nearly fully automated inspection platform that aims to limit engineering judgment and less cost future work can be actually provided for different uh, for other different civil engineering structures and infrastructures we can couple the uav images drone images we can cover more concrete durability issues and finally we can couple the actual practice of detecting damage into the industry by the advances of deep learning to finally try to offer a fully uh, reliable inspection platform with minimal uh, human uh, intervention thank you very much and uh, i'm very happy to uh, listen to your uh, to your questions thank you very much for your time and uh, consideration